गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम डॉक्टर अजय सिंह ठाकुर असिट प्रोफेसर इन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एथमेटिक्स टूडे विल डिस्कस द कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ फ्रैक्चर्स एस यू ऑल नो दे कैन ऑलवेज बी फ्रैक्चर इन ट्रॉमा पेशेंट्स और हाई वेलोसिटी इंजरी दे कैन बी असिटिव फ्रैक्चर्स but sometimes these fractures are isolated and sometimes they come with a package so these packages can be divided into or complications can be divided into general or local complications local complications can be further divided early or late first i'll enumerate this complications and then we'll discuss it further now coming back to the general complications or the systemic complications whenever there is a fracture because of injury or high velocity trauma there can be a septic shock which can be hypovolemic shock rigid shock septic shock or rigid shock there can be a septic fat embolism can be pulmonary embolism can be crush syndrome there can be multiple organ failure syndrome there can be thromboembolism or tetanus and gas gangrenes now coming to local complications first i'll enumerate and we'll discuss it the early complications are visceral injury to the lung bladder urethra and other organs there can be vascular injury there can be nerve injury there can be associated compartment syndrome there can be hematrosis infection gas gangrene can be fracture blisters or plaster and pressure sores because of past application now the late complications which can happen due to fractures are delayed union non union mal union avascular necrosis root disturbances bad sores myositis ossificans muscle contracture tendon lesions nerve compressions and entrapment and there can be associated joint strain instability or joint stiffness there can be crbs which you know as complex regional pain syndrome lastly there can be osteoarthritis at very late stages now coming back to the early complications see whenever there is a trauma to the lung or chest pelvis or abdomen they can be associated visceral injury directly because of trauma or indirectly the fracture fragments like broken ribs or broken uh, bones can lacerate the visceral organs like lungs the bladder the liver or sometimes kidneys also this Visceral injury can be associated with severe bleeding, especially if the spleen is involved or liver is involved. So you have to be careful in these cases. That first, the patient can also go into hemorrhagic or hypovolemic shock. So whenever you see a case of polytrauma with hemorrhagic or hypovolemic shock, always rule out the visceral injury. now some of the immediate complication of fracture which is very dreadful is vascular injury see a limb or a tissue cannot survive without blood supply for very long so whenever there is associated vascular injury in these fractures or any trauma we have to be very fast and you have to act immediately because a tissue cannot survive for more than 4 to 6 hours without blood supply so the blood supply has to be restored within this time onset is at the time of trauma itself so delay in treatment can cause a permanent loss of limb in such cases there can be associated nerve injury especially there is a fracture of distal humerus radial nerve injuries are very very common the nerve can get lacerated or there can be neuropraxy of the nerve or at later stages the nerve can get and trapped in the fracture callus 
Whenever there is a fracture, there is a cystic soft tissue injury. So as a thumb rule, you have to rule out any compartmental syndrome, especially in the leg. Whenever there is an isolated fracture of leg, and especially when the fibula is intact, when you see an intact fibula, always measure the compartmental pressure to rule out compartment syndrome. So whenever there is a fracture which is very close to the joint, especially the articular and periarticular fractures, there can be associated hemorrhosis or bleeding inside the joint, which can damage the joint permanent, permanently at a later stage. Also, whenever there is a open wound or a dirty wound associated with fracture, especially in the road traffic accident or the mind blast injuries, can get conditions like gas gangrene. What happens in that? Then because of super added infection, this clostridium bacteria grows in the wound itself and can produce a gas gangrene of that local part or limb. So coming back to the local or visceral injuries, whenever see the, whenever there is trauma through the trunk to the spine, to the pelvis, to the ribs, and there's multiple fractures, always, always suspect there's a associated local injury and rule out with a, some, there's something called fast, the focus abdominal ultrasound. Or you can get a CT scan directly to rule out any visceral injuries or local vital organ injuries that you always suspect or otherwise you may lose the patient if you miss these injuries. Now, other I want to elaborate on vascular injuries. These are again very dreadful injuries. Whenever there is a vascular injury, what you will do? Feel the... In all cases of fracture, you must palpate the distal pulses. And you find the reduced or absent pulses, always think of a vascular injuries which are more common around the fractures around knee, the femoral shaft, elbow and humerus. You should know the anatomy of the blood vessels. If the fracture or cognitive fractures happens to be in the vicinity of blood vessel, they can always, always be a vascular injury. Vascular injury can be direct cut or tear in the artery, or it can be a compression or a contusion, or sometimes the vessel may go into the spasm. So, all these are the vascular injuries which you have to be careful about. As a thumb rule, whatever the vascular injuries, early restoration of blood supply has to be there. So, you have to be very, very careful in such cases. You have to act fast and then only you can save a limb. If you delay the treatment, then a patient can lose his limb at such time. Now, some of the common vascular injury which can be associated with, see, the first rib fracture, if you see a first fracture of the first rib, there can be injury to subclavian artery. So, you have to know the anatomy very thoroughly. Whenever there is shoulder injury or dislocation, a situated fracture, always suspect axillary artery injury. Always in fracture of supra or dilatumus, especially in the children, always suspect the brachial artery injury. Whenever there is an elbow dislocation, there can be injury to the brachial artery. In pelvic fractures, there can be injury to the presenter or the Ilian, especially internal ileic blood vessels. In femoral or fractures, especially the fractures around knee, the supracondylar fracture, they can be due to the femoral artery itself. Knee dislocation injury to popliteal artery is fairly common. So, again, in fracture of proximal tibia, popliteal artery or its branches can get. So, how will you go about these cases? Firstly, look for a 
Digital pulses, whether they are intact or feeble, the volume is decreased, always suspect a vascular injury. So clinically, when the ischemia sets in, get the principle of five Ps. There can be pain, paresthesia, pallor, pulselessness, and in later stages, complete paralysis. So investigation of choice in the vascular injury is angiogram. You can get a CT or MR angiogram done. Or a Doppler is study, especially venous and arterial flow studies are quite fast and can be easily done at most of the higher centers. If they are not available, kindly refer the patient very, very fastly to nearest center where these facilities are. So these vascular injuries are always an emergency. There are the surgical emergencies. We should act fast. First, we remove all bandages, sprint, and see if there, external, if there is any external compression. Get the X-ray done fast. Reassess the circulation for next half hours. In half an hour, you should actually get the uh, Doppler USG and if possible, a CT injury done. If there is no improvement, then immediate exploration of the vessel is mandatory. If needed, apply an X fix or temporarily fix the fracture and restore the lignite. Most of the time it works. I'll tell you most of the time it works, but you have to be fast to act. Now, next, coming to the nerve injuries, there can be Nerve injury associated with the fracture, especially radial nerve is most commonly important. Fracture of distal humerus, which can be nerve injury, can be neuropraxia, axonotomasis, or neurotomasis. One nerve, if you ask me, you have to be very careful about is the radial nerve, and I'm telling you in the distal humerus fracture. There can be variable degree of sensory or motor loss. Whenever there is a nerve injury, there can be a variable degree of sensory and motor loss. So some of the nerve injuries which are common in fractures are related to it. Axial nerve, again, like axillary artery, it is common. In. Whenever there is dislocation of shoulder, how you see there is a back sign, there is a sensory loss for the area of regimental back sign, what you call. There can be a paralysis of deltoid muscle. A radial nerve, like I mentioned, it is fairly common in fracture of humerus. All uses, there can be complete stroke or loss of extension of fingers, active extension. So the median nerve can be easily called in a supracondylar fracture of humerus. What is the sign? This is a sign, the pointing sign. Point the index finger, ask the patient to point his index finger, he will not be able to. Alana, always suspect Alana paralysis in case of medial epicondyle humeral fracture. What you will get is clinically you see the claw hand. This is the claw hand deformity where there is a flexion at PIP joint in. Little finger and ring finger and extension at DIP joint. So, this is a classical clock. Sciatic nerve can be involved in posterior distribution of fib. Patient may present the foot. So, always see, examine the foot. So there is a posterior distribution of hip. Common panel now can be judged whenever there is a knee dislocation or fracture neck of fibula. Whenever there is a fracture of neck of fibula, always suspect a common panel injury. It will also present as a foot drop. The two components of common panel, superficial and deep, check for both components. Now again, this nerve can be injured both in open and closed structures. In closed structure, it is less common, but in 
Yes, it can be there. Always rule out any neurovascular injury when there is a fracture. So these are the some of the severe complications which I am discussing. The next severe complication is compartment syndrome. So what are the compartments? You should know the compartments of leg, thigh, arm and forearm. So whenever there is a combinated fracture or a high velocity trauma, the compartment, the uh, facial compartments, they can be increased soft tissue injury which can cause increase in the compartmental pressure. So when you call it as compartment syndrome, as per definition, the compartment syndrome always involves whenever there is a compression of nerves, blood vessels in an enclosed space due to rise of intracompartmental pressure leading to impaired blood flow and nerve damage. So this is how a compartment syndrome manifests itself. Now the fascia separating the group of muscles in the arms and the leg from each other inside each layer of fascia there is a confined space called compartment that includes the muscle tissue, the nerve, the bone and blood vessels. So a rise in pressure within this compartment, what can it do? It can increase the blood supply to the distal part or it can cause a nerve injury. This is the components of compartment syndrome. So always have a high index of suspicion in the trauma patients. What you look for is, is there any vascular injury, is there any nerve injury or is there any compartment syndrome? Because these three are needed to be mentioned because they are the dreaded complications which can happen. So what happens in the muscle injury? Whenever there is injury, there is a septic edema, there can be a fracture hematoma and see when there is a ischemia. So what happens when the compartment pressure increases? So you have to always remember that the venous supply is at lower pressure than the arterial supply. So first to go will be the venous supply which will further increase the compartment pressure. Now hallmark of the symptoms are they can be severe pain that does not respond to pain medications. Whenever there is compartment syndrome, there is severe pain which is unresponsive. There can be, in more advanced cases, there can be decreased sensation. So what will happen in decreased sensation? The pain will decrease. So initially, always remember the pain will be severe, but at later stages, the pain will decrease. So, Decrease in pain is actually an obvious sign. So be very, very careful whenever there is a decrease in pain after a catastrophic pain. If there is a decrease in sensation, decrease in pain, intensity of pain, it's an obvious sign. Remember that. Now there can be injuries with a high risk of developing compartment which are injuries to the elbow, to the fracture of both bones or the proximal third of the tibia. Now you should always remember this what vicious cycle, the vicious cycle of Voxman ischemia. What happens? There is arterial damage can cause to direct ischemia or direct injury can cause to the muscle can cause edema. There will be increased compartment syndrome and there is because of the result of increased uh, compartment, there will be reduced blood flow. So at this stage, the treatment of choice is fasciotomy. If you fail to do a fasciotomy, there can be increased pain initially followed by decreased pain. There can be pallor, there can be paresthesia. 
this paresthesia is what colonialistic paresthesia just on touching the patient with complain of severe pain or at the later stages there can be paralysis or pulse restless. Now, whenever there is muscle injury, that, whenever there is an injury, the dictum is healing. So, uh, how can a necrosed muscle heal? It will heal by fibrosis, which can lead to the boxman ischemic contracture. So, in extreme cases, it can also lead to the gangrene, onset of gangrene, which can get infected and produce gas gangrene. So, you have to be very, very, very careful in this case. So, how can you elicit increased compartment pressure? It can be done by a simple bedside test. You can just passively stretch the muscles. How can you do that? By hyperextending the toes or fingers, you can stretch the posterior compartment of leg or the compartments of forearm. So, what will happen? There will be increased pain. The patient will not allow to that. So, whenever you see that, always suspect there is a compartment syndrome. You can measure the compartment pressure directly. If there is 40 millimeter of Pressure is more than 40 millimeter. What happens? Blood supply to the tissue that have So, this can cause an increased compartment till pressure, which can treat by decreasing the compartmental pressure. How do you do that? You can do a fasciotomy in that stage. First, remove all the bandages and dressing and if you are 100% confirmed that I am dealing with a increased compartmental pressure, kindly do a fasciotomy or refer to a surgeon or orthopedic surgeon who can do a fasciotomy if you cannot do it, but you have to be fast. Now coming to hemarthrosis, see whenever there is a fracture close to joint or communicating with the joint, what will happen? There will be bleeding, and where the blood will accumulate, it will accumulate in the joint itself. So, what this condition is called? It is called heme arthrosis. So, what are the clinical features of heme arthrosis? There will be effusion in the joint. All the pits around joint will on, and the joint will appear swollen or when you palpate, you can actually elicit the fluctuation in the joint. So, always remember if there is a sudden effusion, it cannot be a sinusoidal fluid because sinusoidal fluid formation will take some time. So, always suspect a hemarthrosis whenever there is a catastrophic onset or like in a case of fracture. So, how will you elicit this uh, hemarthrosis? You can simply aspirate, it will be diagnostic as well as treatment. Both it will serve both the purpose. When you aspirate the knee joint, what it will do? You remove the blood vessel, blood inside the knee joint. So it, it is a treatment by itself. Now coming to the infections. So it is more common in open wound because they are more likely to be contaminated. They can be dust, particles, they can be cloth, they can be leaves, or a lot of things which can be present inside the wound, which can lead to infection either immediately or at a later stage. So, how will you suspect this infection? Which is there will be zero pollen discharge from the bone coming out. So, whenever you see that, please consider that the bone is now infected and has to be divided and treated. All the devitalized tissue has to be removed, all the dead tissues has to be removed. 
all debris has to be removed and please give adequate antibiotic cover till you get a culture positive on this. Now coming to gas gangrene. So whenever the wound is get infected by anaerobic organism, especially of the prostate species, what happens? This organism can survive without organism. That's why they are called anaerobic. So when they infect the wound, so they produce some toxins which can further lead to tissue necrosis. How will the patient present? Patient will present with the intense wound, the swelling will be a brownish discharge from the wound, which signifies infection. There can be gas infection, gas formation in the wound itself. You can see the plebs. Or patient will have a high temperature or fever. And remember that these wounds smell bad. What do they do? They smell bad. There is always foul smell associated with a gas gangrene. So whenever you see a wound which is smelling bad, always suspect a gas gangrene in such condition. So how can you prevent a gas gangrene? All the deep penetrating wound must be explored, all the debris which can potentially cause infection should be removed. Firstly, first thing you should do is divide the wound all the dead tissues, all the debris from the wound. So this can prevent infection at later stages or gas gangrene formation. Now treatment part, obviously you will give fluids, you can give hyperbaric oxygen, but the main stage of the treatment is from discompression and removal of dead tissue. So the time is short, but today we have discussed some of the complications of fractures. Next class, we'll discuss other complications like I have not covered uh, delayed union, non-union, malignant, because there will be a separate lecture for that. Avian, there will be a separate lecture. Root disturbances, the muscle discount. Contracture or oscillation, muscle injury, tendon injury, except lectures for that. So, we will cover it later in the later lectures. Thank you very much.